thread is one of the most ancient and beautiful of embroidery materials. It's been used since biblical times when they used to beat it into flat plates and weave it in with their stitches. But the Chinese discovered a wonderful way of using it. Instead of the fragile plain gold, they wrapped it around a core of silk. And that made it much more pliable and easy to work with. Can you see the little piece of silk tassel that I've pulled out by unraveling this little bit of gold? Of course, this is pure gold thread, so it'll never tarnish. And this is the way that these absolutely magnificent Chinese robes were done. You naturally can't sew this gold through the cloth. You have to couch it, it's called, sewing it with tiny stitches on the surface of the material. This is the wedding garment made for the daughter-in-law of the emperor Hu Ping Qian, known to the Western world as Hu Kua. And it's all resplendent in silk and gold thread. There are French knots up here, which are just outlined with a fine gold thread, dragons and all kinds of animals in beautiful colors on the background of the red silk. Over here is a robe which was made for the emperor's court. And it's entirely done in blue silk with gold thread, all couched down over the surface. Look at this ferocious dragon in the middle of the back. His eyes are nearly popping out of his head, and he has five claws because he's an imperial dragon. Each of his little scales is finely stitched down with row after row of gold thread. And even though it's all solid gold, you can see each scale because of the fine twisted gold that's sewn down. Down at the bottom is a magnificent seascape. There are fish rising out of the waves and little pagodas in the background in the mist. The Chinese were absolute masters at stylizing design. They've been known to look at a landscape for a year before translating it into a pattern. And those waves are certainly a magnificent example, I think. Well, it may be difficult for you to find this beautiful gold thread, although it is still available. But fortunately, we live in the age of Lurex. And you can find this in most of the department stores, particularly at Christmas time. And as it's made of aluminum, it'll never tarnish. I have a friend who made a complete panel in Lurex threads working on needlepoint canvas. He did his singing angels with all kinds of stitches using both silver and gold. Look at these wings. They're all done with satin stitches going right through the needlepoint canvas. And then the faces are delineated with a fine line of needlepoint stitching in blue wool. This angel is worked in a pattern of silver and gold. And over here is an angel blowing a horn. Her face is finely worked in needlepoint stitching. And her halo has a pattern of little squares of satin stitch. It's really extremely difficult to do this, but I think it's magnificently effective. When he'd finished, he sprayed the whole surface of the canvas and his stitching with brown so that it gave it an antique look. Well, as I said, the best way to collect your threads for this gold embroidery is to buy them wherever you can find them and keep them in your workbox ready at hand for when you want to start stitching. And I think if you make yourself a sampler, you'll know exactly what effects you can get with the different textures and the different materials. I started one here, and I did some regular chain stitch with that knitting Lurex, because you can sew that right through the material. And it, I started with a little scroll, and then it seemed to turn into a snail. And so I decided to put it on, on a leaf. But the main stitch that you really will find the most practical is couching. That's the one that was done so finely on the dragons in the Chinese robes. 
And here I've used just a regular Lurex thread, quite thick, two threads together, and stitched it down with red, side by side. You can practice that stitch by just meandering all over the place. It's called random couching instead of regular couching. You come up on one side, go down on the other, and just hold the gold flat with little straight stitches right across it. I'm using just a regular embroidery floss or cotton. <clears throat> and this thread was a piece of elasticized gold that came on a box of chocolates that somebody gave me last week. I don't advise you are starting with elasticized thread, though, because it really seems to have a mind of its own. It's rather like stitching down a recalcitrant s snake. <laughs> it won't lie exactly where you want it, but for random couching, it's quite easy. Well, if you want to do a circle like this one that I did here, you take your colored silk thread or cotton thread and loop the gold <clears throat> into a loop, come up, sew it down, and take two stitches there. <clears throat> Ominous cracks as I turn the frame. Pull it tight and pull it <clears throat> so that it kinks. Then take a stitch right across where it's doubled Start turning it and work your couching stitches right over the two loops of gold very close together because the first turning is the more difficult. But you work your way around, placing the stitches close together, getting wider and wider. Always come up on the outside of the couching threads and go down towards the center. You can see the stitches beginning to radiate. It's really such fun. It's very hard to stop once I've started. But I want to show you how to plunge a thread. Supposing you came to the end of the circle, as I did over here, you see the stitches radiating outwards like the spokes of a wheel. Take a huge dagger of a needle stick it into the material, poke your gold through, and plunge it. Pull very hard. You may need to use a pair of pliers. <laughs> and then get it so that it goes right through and cut it a little bit short on the other side. But it's held securely by your couching stitches. Now. I've got to show you Pekingese stitch, because that is this fancy one, which must have been done in Peking. That's how it got its name. But it consists of a back stitch, which is done in heavy cotton. Come up and go back into the right, right into the back of the last stitch you just did. up and back. And then, with that large needle, thread just the end of your gold through and twist it so it stays in there. Don't try and double your gold thread through as far as this, because that'll make a very thick thing for you to pull through. If you double it just at the end of the needle and rather soften it and loosen it by fraying it out a little, you'll find it soft enough to push through your silk threads. Now, I'm using a blunt needle, and I'm going right through the back stitch, not through the material, just through the back stitch itself on the surface, and leave a little loop. Now go back through the previous stitch and dive underneath everything. That's why you're using a blunt needle so you don't prick your other stitches and get caught up in them. 
through, leave a loop, back, underneath, and pull it rather tight. Go through, untwist it, and go back, leaving a loop. So that makes a beautiful little braided edge. And it's really very intriguing, I think. You could go round in circles and make one of these circular shapes with it. Well, gold thread has been used, of course, for religious use through the ages, from the time of sun worshippers, because gold seemed to be the material that most resembled the sun. So here's a panel which one of my pupils was embroidering for her church in Murray Bay in Canada. And it's all done with gold couching using the Japanese gold just like those oriental robes with silk for the figures which is then outlined in gold. When you sew this gold down very finely you have to work on a large embroidery frame or you might crush your stitches if you put a ring over them so you can use a rug frame or anything of that sort but when you do so with fine silk thread you should wax it with beeswax thread your needle and draw it through several times and that makes your fine thread strong enough so that the gold won't cut it and it won't lift up. It just gives it that extra bit of strength for hard wearing. But supposing you wanted to do something a little more close to home and not quite so monumental, what about an evening bag? This one is done with gold thread and silk in all sorts of shades of yellow. And here's one done entirely in silk in brilliant colors. So I thought perhaps a combination of the two might be rather fun. I used this ombre thread, the shaded thread that you can buy, and I laid my stitches in on the body, and then I'm going to crisscross them with a gold thread, a lurex, that you can sew through. And when you've crisscrossed it all over, you can tie down those crisscrosses with a tiny little blue stitch. It's just there's no end to the different effects that you can get, both sewing the gold and couching it. The ombre thread gives you a wonderful shading with very little work for you to do at choosing the color. Well, I think you can see it's really not as difficult as you might have imagined. And it really is so intriguing. I do hope you'll try it. Besides, it's simply great to be a top-notch embroideress who's graduated to gold thread. See you soon. <laughs>